this initiation that makes us more human. So how do we get started? Where is love in us? Where? Essentially, it's in our attentiveness forces. We begin life by giving attention and out of that taking on our humanity. The infant child borns with this freedom to give attention and remember the archetypal potential of developing capacities to communicate its way into the world, to learn the way of becoming. And everything the child learns is done out of love for being in our world, being in our reality. And at a certain point, we acquire ultimately the power of divination. The child not only sees its potential in the world, but begins to see the other that appears before us. <coughs> And in this sense of relatedness, other complex soul qualities arise. And one of these qualities is the capacity for speech. To begin to say, I. the prerequisite for community, the prerequisite for being a creator of reality. And I'm describing this subtle, this subtle process of evolution of consciousness in our everyday world, whereby the things that we possess naturally is cultivated out of this complex potential that can heal, that can resolve, that can transform, and that can create ex extraordinary potential. But there's something that we must overcome, even as we have to find the right words for giving meaning to what I am intending to say. In the same way, we must find the meaning to love in such a way that it becomes a capacity to divine, to see further than our own self-interest. One of the qualities that I observed in Yip, one of the, one of the, the things that we got to, call, to, to explore is what must I give in order to know through things my own potential <coughs> and the potential of agreement that the other can support? How does this dialogue of a shared reality happen? So I'm asking myself this as I speak to you now. What is it that I must remember? A poet, William Stafford, whom I try to read one of his poems every day, because he wrote one every day for 35 years. <laughs> and the most I can do is read one <laughs> in honor of his legacy in the world. And this is one he entitled 
you reading this be ready. Starting here, what do you want to remember? How sunlight creeps against a shining floor? What scent of old wood hovers? What softened sound fills the air from outside? Will you ever bring a better gift for the world than the breeding respect that you carry with you wherever you go right now? Are you waiting for time to show you some better thought? When you turn around, starting here, lift this new glimpse that you have found. Carry into the evening all that you want from this day. This interval you spent reading or hearing this, keep it for life. What can anyone give you greater than now? Starting here, right in this room, when you turn around. What can anyone give you greater than now? There's a sense that we strive for something more. Something more. There is an inner sense that there is more to do with who we are. And to accomplish, to attain this inner potential. But he puts it very subtly in this poem. He says, what we are to achieve is the giving of our gift. What we are to achieve is the unique expression of our individuality into the world. So really, there's no world without you and what you give. This, this remarkable idea of turnaround, which means to reflect into the self. To reflect on your own potential is the work. To ask, if I do this now, what will happen to the world? What will happen to the structures of my relationship if I be myself? This breathing, he called it the breathing respect. The sense that your breath is everything to you. Our breath is everything to us. It keeps us what, alive. And to stand in that respect that I am living because I am living. I'm doing something to be alive. I am serving life. And this service, this cultivation of this gesture of not waiting for time or someone else to give you any more thing because you are ready. Why? Why are you ready? Because we are, and we began with life being ready. We've been giving our attention, and because of it, we have become who we are. We breathe, we breathe our way into where we are. No one else, no one gives us anything more than our breath. Our breath, our breath keeps us alive. And the breath could be considered something of the essence of purpose. Not respiration, not the functional way the love works. The breath is this imaginal, creative, superconscious, archetypal way with which we live and have our being. 